Allah. Take some prayer. Surely I am being turned to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright. To him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not from among the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So please grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, for none can guide to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true and faithful followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and the true and faithful followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. And O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true and faithful followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true and faithful followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may now be seated. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you once again with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language of Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. First of all, I want to uh, correct the mistake that I made in last Sunday's opening. I said that. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad met face to face with Master Fahd Muhammad in 1930. The correct year is 1931, 1931. I want to thank our student regional minister, Dr. Abdul Halim Muhammad, for pointing out this mistake to me so that I could make this correction. And I also want to thank him for allowing me once again to open up this meeting in prayer. In the prayer, brothers and sisters, we ask Allah to guide us to the best of morals. So I want to talk about how this mosque meeting is an answer to that prayer and how this house, this mosque environment, helps us to develop these good morals, and also how these good morals will help us to better love ourselves and each other. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us guiding rules of conduct, which are good manners that protect good morals. He took many of our people from right up off the streets, raised us up in an entirely new and different environment. And when you come to the mosque, you're in that environment. The first thing you notice when you come here is how we have the respect and honor for our sisters. Our brothers are trained to protect our sisters, open doors for our sisters, carry bags for our sisters. And these manners produce an entirely different mindset, different respect and admiration for our black women. We don't see the brothers or hear the brothers talking that street talk in front of the sisters. We don't see the sisters walking the street walk in front of the brothers. But what we do see in here is a nation that protects and respects the black women because a nation can rise no higher than its woman. Now let's make that the new talk on the streets. All oh, praise due to Allah. We live in a violent world. There's a war going on in Ukraine. There's domestic violence in the home. There's gang violence in the streets. But we have to make war against the violent mindset. Mindset. What's the mindset of the police when they pull us over, stop us, and frisk us? Oftentimes, it's a violent mindset, but that's not us. Yes, we do have a check procedure, and no, you cannot bring any guns, no contraband. If you're intoxicated, please stay at home, but we're not looking for the worst in you. We're not treating you like an enemy with the mindset of locking you up. We're looking for the best in you, treating you like our family with the mindset of making you free. All praises are due to Allah. Now, freedom doesn't mean we can come in and do just anything we want to do. So before the brothers and sisters jump across the aisle to sit next to one another, we have our owl posts to direct us toward our designated seating area. In the book of John, it tells us in 15, 12, this is my, this my commandment is that ye love one another as I have loved you. So in our mass meetings, we're being gently guided to those manners, those morals, those principles that produce in us that type of love. 
When the black man and black woman are close to one another, a different type of love comes to mind, a more intimate type of love. And so we're separated in our mosque meeting so we can focus, focus on the word of Almighty God Allah. Are you ready for that word? Praise be to Allah. We're going to go to the Holy Quran, Surah 469. Allah says, and whoever obeys Allah and the messenger, they are with those upon whom Allah has bestowed favors from among the prophets and the truthful and the faithful and the righteous and a goodly company are they. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be in that company. How about you? <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Well, I have good news for you. This mosque environment, the order, the setup, the arrangement comes directly from the mind of Almighty God Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Father Muhammad. So just by being here and obeying the rules and regulations of this house, you are obeying Allah and the messenger. By obeying the laws in this house, you're walking with the prophets. Abraham, Moses, Jesus of 2,000 years ago, Muhammad of 1,400 years ago. By obeying the laws of this house, you're walking with Jesus who is among us today. The most honorable, or he is most honorable, but the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And as we obey the laws of his house, we are learning to love one another as the minister has loved us. Yeah. Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan says in the Restrictive Laws of um, Islam book on page 126, he said, where there is law, there will soon be love. Right. So I wanna thank you all for adhering to the check post, to adhering to the seating arrangement, and to sit here so patiently and beautifully listen to the word of Almighty God Allah. Now the question I have is, do we love our brothers and sisters? Yeah. All praise is due to Allah. Well, with that in mind, I want to introduce our next speaker. So please put your hands together and show some love for another student in the ministry, our sister, Sister Lanicia Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Fard Muhammad. And I further bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is our living and exalting Christ. And I further bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine warner, our reminder, and our mercy in this day of judgment. I greet you all with the nation's greeting words of peace in paradise. We say in the Arabic language, as alaikum. alaykum. And Ramadan Mubarak. Praise be to Allah. So as you all know, we are in the middle of our month of Ramadan, and this is a month of fasting. This is a month of prayer. This is a month where we do good to others that we normally wouldn't do in the month of Ramadan so that we continue these habits outside of the month of Ramadan. So today we're going to talk about prayer. Now as Muslims, we prepare for prayer in a certain manner. We have certain times of the day that we pray, and the positions that we take in prayer are also very significant. So before going into prayer, we have our process wudu or ablution. And this process is a cleansing process. It cleanses our physical impurities as well as our spiritual impurities. So we began with cleansing our hands and the messenger teaches us that this process of course gets rid of the physical impurities and the dirt because we want to present ourselves in the best manner before Allah. So this process gets rid of that physical impurities and it also gets rid of anything of evil doings we may have done with our hands before going into prayer. The messenger teaches us that this cleansing our hands also signifies us asking Allah to wash his hands in forgiveness of the sins that we may have committed. So praise be to Allah for this step. Now in wudu, we cleanse our eyes, we cleanse our ears, we wash our feet and we wash over our heads, we wash our necks, getting rid of physical and spiritual impurities. So anything we may have seen that's not of Allah, anything we may have heard that's not of Allah, any thoughts we may have had of ourselves or about our brothers and sisters that's not of Allah, we get rid of this before going into prayer because prayer represents the purification of our hearts. So it is only right that we present ourselves in the purest manner before Allah. Is that right? Yes, Praise be to Allah. The messenger teaches us that the wudu or ablution process it shows respect to Allah and it signifies our desire to show Allah that the words we pray are clean and that they're coming from a clean heart. This is why it's mandatory to do this process, wudu or ablution, before prayer because cleanliness is godliness. So when we present ourselves before Allah, we are in our cleanest manner. 
So after cleansing our spiritual and physical bodies, we get into the position of prayer. And as Brother Charles mentioned before, as Muslims, we pray upright. We have our hands outstretched, showing that they're empty and in surrenderance to Allah. We face the east, which is in the direction of the holiest city on earth, the holy city Mecca. All of this is very significant. The Holy Quran teaches us to seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive. Prayer is a sign of submission to Allah. And to benefit from prayer, to benefit from everything that we are asking from in prayer, it is important that we be humble. It is important that we be submissive. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches that humility is the greatest characteristic that we can have as humans. So again, to benefit from prayer is important that we, are, that we have humility. Praise be to Allah. Whenever we acknowledge that Allah is our God, that he is the one we are submitting to, that he is the one that can handle our problems, because again, he handled making this earth. He got rid of the impossible whenever he created you and I. So surely he can handle our problems. When we submit to this God, we are being humble and we are being submissive. Praise be to Allah. The times that we pray also hold great significance. We have our Fajr prayer, which is in the morning, right when the sun is going up, 5 a.m. And of course, a lot of us are sleeping at this time, and that's something that we hold. But surely, sleep is a small price to pray whenever we are waking up to pray to Almighty God Allah. The Holy Quran teaches us that prayer is better than sleep. So waking up, asking Allah for guidance, and not only asking for something, but thanking him, as Sister Naja has taught in her 99 attributes in 30 days, thanking Allah for something, that is surely better than sleep. Right. Praise be to Allah. We have our door prayer, and the Holy Quran teaches us that in door is the noontime prayer. So of course, many of us are working, many of us are going throughout our day, but we are taught to stop what we're doing and to turn to a lot in prayer because surely that is better than anything that we could be doing. And then as the day goes on, we have three prayers closer towards the sun as it's setting. We have our after doer, we have our Asr prayer, we have our Maghrib prayer, and we have Isha prayer. And these prayers are all set closer to as the sun is setting. The minister teaches, Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that in the darkness, that is where temptation lies. In the darkness, that is where Satan will try the temptations of the believers. So in the darkness, that is when we pray to Allah the most. That is when we are, have our open communication with Allah the most. Prayer drives away good deeds as the Holy Quran teaches us. So as the sun is going down and those evil doings are coming to us and temptations, prayer drives these things away. And our last prayer, Isha prayer, is that at the end of the day, the Holy Quran teaches that the night precedes the day. So how we close our night out, how we talk to Allah at night, that sets us up for a successful day. As we go through our days, it is important that we strive to stay in the remembrance of Allah. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says in the message to the black man, we owe our very lives to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Why should we not thank him? Our every good thought we owe to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely, as often as we sin, we turn to him in prayer. He is most merciful and grants us pardon. And oftentimes we drift back again to some other flaw. For this, we must turn to him again, asking to be forgiven. Surely Allah knows what is in our hearts and what is more, he is oft forgiving. Praise be to Allah. And now I would like to bring up another sister in our student ministry class. She has been a great sister, a great friend to me, and she is a great sister and a great friend to the nation of Islam. That is Sister Saadia Kareem. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Praise be to Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the exalted Christ and he is alive and in our midst. And I further bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine reminder. He's a divine guide, he's a mercy, he's a grace, and he's a comforter. And we need all of that, do we not? So I greet the beautiful believers in the words of peace and paradise of As-Salaamu Alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. 
And we don't celebrate Easter, but it is Resurrection Sunday every Sunday here at Mars 45. So you just heard our beautiful sister, Sister Lenicia, talk about the principles of prayer, which is one of our pillars of Islam. And not only is prayer, but we also have four more other pillars, which are the core beliefs of what we believe as Muslims. Is that right? We believe in one God, right, who appeared in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. We believe in the concept of charity, the pillar of charity. Is that right? We believe in fasting. We're in the midst of Ramadan, right, the day 16 and then the pilgrimage. And these four pillars also represent a principle of actions for believers. So you have pillars which are the foundation of what we believe, and then we have those things that are actions that demonstrate these pillars. And so one of these action items or action principles is what we call jihad, the principle of action that supports the very essence and being of who we are. Now, jihad is not some holy war, some zealot who calls himself a Muslim who straps bombs on their chest, right, to become a martyr and goes into uh, houses of, that are sacred to us and kills innocent people. That's propaganda. That's what the media would show you about Islam. But that's not the Islam that Allah would intend for it to be because we know Islam is a faith of peace. Now, we in the nation, we are peaceful people, is that right? When you came on the check post, or came through the check post rather, they checked your person to make sure that you were free from any weapons or anything that may come in here and disturb my or your peace. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us and mandates us that we do not carry as much as a pen knife, right? It is our minds, and if must, these hands, that we would use in order to secure the mind, the body, and the spirit of the believers and ourselves. Is that right? The Holy Quran says in Surah 290, to fight in the way of Allah against those who fight against us, but be not aggressive. Surely Allah loves not the aggressors. So we'll never, you'll never find us being the aggressors. But if you come our way, then guess what? Fighting is enjoined on us, is that right? Now, jihad is an Arabic word which literally means striving or doing one's utmost. The word jihad derives from the Arabic root jid, signifying intense struggle or effort. In a hadith, which is a narrative recording of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, one of his companions noted that Prophet Muhammad, after he returned from battle, reportedly commented that, quote, we have returned from the less jihad to the greater jihad, end quote. And when someone asked the prophet what the greater jihad was, he said to have replied, the struggle with one's own self. So within Allah, there are two theological understandings of the word, the greater jihad, which is the struggle of the lower self, the struggle to purify one's heart, to do good, to not do evil, and to make oneself a better person. And the outward of the lesser struggle or lesser jihad is that outward struggle when we have to fight because it is enjoined on us. So jihad is a moral principle to struggle against any obstacle that stands in the way of good and stands in the way of God. Now the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in an address of the 21st anniversary of the Million Man March stated, quote, the real jihad is the struggle of the human being against the whispering of himself that causes him to deviate from righteousness. And as members of the Nation of Islam and our supreme wisdom, we are given a question in our English lesson number C1. Are there any Muslims other than righteous? And the response is, I beg your pardon, I've never heard of one. That's because the essence of who you are, black man and black woman, is the essence of Allah Almighty himself. And that is one who is righteous. That is who we are because we naturally submit our will to Allah. So our pillars in belief in one God, knowing we, not, we do not believe in a spook God, is that right? That God resides in us, that we are power and force and we were made in his image and his likeness. And we also know that we have the ability through prayer to connect with Allah, to communicate with him and rely only on him because he is our dependence and he is sufficient for us, right? And then we know that it is through our charity, which is an act of devotion, right? But it's not just 
showing him through our money or through our talents or through what we have to give to him to show that we love and we care about him. But we know when we give that he returns it back to us tenfold. Praise be to Allah. And as we are in the midst of Ramadan, we know that fasting is prescribed for us, one, not only to purify our minds and our hearts and our bodies and our spirits, but we know that it helps guard against the evil that may come our way. And that is a personal struggle that we may have. And then when we accept Hajj or we go on a pilgrimage, we know that it is for us to not only to profess our faith, but we unite with our community of Islam. And so as we embark on the great jihad, the struggle against the lower self, the struggle to purify our hearts and to do good and, and to make sure that we are clean in the sight of our law and strengthen our faith, let's hold fast to our foundation that stands us upright, our pillars of Islam. So praises be to Allah. So at this time, I would like to present to you our Southwest our South Best Regional Minister, that is none other than Dr. Abdul Haleem Muhammad. And you know what? He's going to give us a word today on Resurrection Sunday. And when you come to the mosque, we know that our spirits, our minds, and our hearts will be resurrected. So let's receive this beautiful man who gives us a mighty word. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I'm a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs and the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Makdi who traveled 9,000 miles to seek and to save that which was lost. We can never thank Allah enough for his demonstration of love in coming and raising up among us a divine leader, a divine teacher, a divine guide, in the person of most honorable Elijah Muhammad, our living and exalted Christ. We thank him also, both Allah and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for not leaving us alone, believing in our midst, our brother, our servant, and our friend, one who has demonstrated his love that he is indeed the embodiment of mercy and forgiveness and tolerance in human flesh. Real love, not fake love, real love. And I speak of the Jesus in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And once again, brothers and sisters, I greet you. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. My beloved brothers and sisters, today is that day that they speak of Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. And uh, normally what I do is I'll go and I'll start talking about the, you know, rabbits don't lay eggs and go through all of that. And what Easter is really about, and what it comes from and how paganism is mixed up with Christianity, when they wouldn't give up the pagan ways, they just amalgamated or put them all together and called it something Christianity. It has nothing to do with the teachings of Jesus, and it has all to do with their unwillingness to give up their pagan ways. But today, brothers and sisters, we cannot delve into the mockeries or the childish understanding of yesterday. It is important now that we understand and recognize why Jesus taught in parables and why one had to come after him to bring them into all truth. In other words, someone had to come behind Jesus and make clear what it is that he was teaching. He had to speak in parables because at the time the Romans had occupied that which was called Palestine and Israel and Judea had occupied it, and they were the ones that appointed the chief priests, and they allowed Herod to be over Judea as a titular, meaning a figurehead leader, but really he was just a puppet of the Romans. 
because they had made Pontius Pilate the governor over that area. Hear me now. So Jesus always had spies around him. And he had to be very careful what he said, because if he started talking about that he was the king that they were all waiting for. So he had to speak in parables. He had to describe his work as being the son of man. He couldn't tell him that he was the one coming to establish the kingdom of God. Because Caesar was seen as the son of Jupiter, which is a Roman God. So for Jesus to say he was the son of God this is why he always he only revealed himself at the end. Was to in fact say he was coming to replace the kingdom of Caesar. So when they asked him, they said, Master, who should we uh who should we pay taxes to? Who should we give our money to? He, he, he said, whose face is on the coin? He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, render unto God what is God. See, he had to be wise. He had to move in a certain kind of way because if he didn't, then they would see him as a threat and Jesus' ministry would have been shorter than it was described in the Bible. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So understand, brothers and sisters, the coming of God in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. And before I go there, let me thank our ministry class, Brother Charles and Sister Lanicia and Sister, uh, I think her name is Sister Firebrand, no, Sister Sadia, for the fine work that they've done. Come on, give them a round of applause. All praise be called out. But, but hold that point, because I, I, I don't want you ever to suffer from the dirtiest four-letter word in the English language. Envy. Envy is the dirtiest four-letter word in the English language. When one of your own is lifted up, you should never, 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 ever envy them in what they're doing and what God has allowed them to do. You and I should always say, oh, praise is due to Allah because your time is coming. You don't have to shine by putting shade on other people. Does that make sense? Oh, praise due to Allah. All right. Where was I? Huh? What? Jesus teaching in parables. Envy. Okay, I hit the envy piece. I wanted to get that out the way because whenever, we, you know, look, this morning, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan lifted up this brother named Shahid. I thought it was math doctor, but it wasn't. It was another brother, Shahid, who's more fluid in the Arabic, right? He lifted him up. He, 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 oh, brother, the, the, the now, if you don't have a heart after God, if you don't have the love of God looking at your brother and your sister and saying, what God has put in her, what God has put in him, guess what? I got something too. So I don't need to hate what God has lifted up in you if you're making it shine. So when the minister is giving love to this brother, you could easily be guilty of envy and say, well, what about me? What about you? What about you? What about you? Check your heart. Check your heart. When your brother, your sister is lifted up and you may know them very personally, you may know them very intimately like you know yourself. You look in the mirror and you know what you did last night, the night before, you up in the mosque, you up in church. You know what you did last night at the club. <laughs> you know what you did Friday night. You were supposed to be a study group, but you know what you are doing Friday night. <laughs> oh, 
You weren't that Bible study. What was you doing Wednesday? It got quiet. It got quiet. All right, let me let me go through this because I'm only going to keep you here 15 hours. But but I, I wanted to hit that point, even if I skip everything and say assalamu alaikum and go. That point I want to get over. Because it is envy that caused the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees to plot on Jesus and get the Romans to kill him. It was fear that they would lose their place in this corrupted Roman occupation and that they would lose their nation because of this one man's preaching. If it sounds familiar, it is because it is because Negroes fear the same thing about Minister Farrakhan. If these people follow that kind of teaching, then, then white people will be upset with us. How can we live a life after being freed and emancipated from physical chattel slavery in 1865? How could you and I in this day and time in 2022 still be a bunch of slaves? Alligator shoe wearing, Mercedes Benz driving, BMW driving, 20th, 21st century slaves. Afraid of what white people would think versus what God would think of you and I if we don't stand up in this day and time for our ancestors who can't speak today and for our children yet unborn. I'm sorry. The children got Minister Farrakhan fired up. Mr. Farrakhan got me fired up. Today is the birth anniversary of my, my wife. And all praise is due to Allah. And you look around and say, well, where is she? She's not here. She's not here. I wish she was. But everybody's got a cross. That, that's my cross to bear. What's yours? Mine is evident. Yours is not. Be careful how you judge another man's servant. Because Lot didn't divorce his wife. God did. Noah didn't send his child to CPS. God drowned him in the Holy Quran. So be careful. How we judge one another. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Be very careful, brother. Y'all okay? All right. I want to thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from the depths of my heart for allowing me to serve him in this mission. And I pray, Allah, that I grow to be worthy of the trust he has put in me and that I can speak for my ancestors and speak to a generation yet unborn yes, and defend and protect and preserve his good name, the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes, and the God who came to raise us from death into life and give us life more abundantly. Master Fahd Muhammad. Yes, Let's go to the swan song. I'm going to keep pounding this, brothers and sisters, because fear, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, is one of our worst enemies. If in your mind is what are we going to do when Minister Farrakhan goes away, some of you think he's going to die. He's not going to this wheel. 
Then those of us who said, when he go to the wheel, then what's going to happen? I'm not going to follow them. If we do that, then we'll be like the woman who she knitted her yarn tightly, but then she let it unravel. If love does not keep us together, if what we're doing is not based upon money, it's not based upon who I like, it's not based upon buddy, buddy, it's based upon love, real love. I ain't talking about that fake kind of love, I'm talking about real love. And sometimes that real love is tough love. Y'all all right? Well, the swan song was supposed to be a farewell, appearance, a final act, a pronouncement, the last performance of peace, or piece of work of by an actor, athlete, or a writer. And I'm going to tell you again, like I told you, like I said, there are takeaways from this. I got my takeaways. I hope you got yours. But mine, start off with the one that's at the pentacle is Minister Farrakhan giving up this potentially great career in music. He was known among his peers. He was great in that music, but he gave it up because he said, I can live without music, but I, he said, what? I cannot live without the truth. He said he wanted us to hold on. He said, I want you to hold on to those words. I cannot live without the truth. So brothers and sisters, question today for us is the title of our talk today is the price of redemption. No cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. You can't wear the crown if you're not willing to pay the price. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that. He said, many of them, want to, they, they want my place, but they don't want to pay the price. No cross, no crown. Let's go straight, straight away. I remember being with Mother Tanetta Muhammad, may Allah forever be pleased with her, at the pretty much the last panel we had coined defending point number 12. And I was on a panel with her and I began running down, you know, the minister, the messengers, Moses and the ministers, Aaron and this, I was running down all this and she kind of chuckled and looked at me. Oh, that's just, that's like just one of their names. Where we make our mistake is we fix a person they're this, we get comfortable in saying that they're this one or that one in the script, and we leave them there. When all the time they're evolving. And if you and I are evolving, we're actually evolving into that which we're pointing to. You didn't get that one. Messiah, Mahdi. He came to North America by himself. I'm talking about Master Fadma. He came to seek and to save what was lost. He found one man among us, he was like a ghost. People saw him, but they did not know who he was. You sing it in church, sweet little Jesus boy, born in a manger, sweet little Jesus boy, I didn't know who you were. The Bible puts it like this, the light shined in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. We did not know, but he came. God came to you to visit you. Think about that. Why would God come to visit us? Do you know that our enslavement, our slavery, suffering and death brought God out of hiding? Do you know in the fulfillment of all scripture that there is nobody more fitting the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin? No one more fitting even during this Passover of the children of Israel than you and I? There's nobody that's on the bottom rung that needs to be raised to the top but you and I. There's nobody that's last that needs to be put first than you and I. 
There's no stone that the builders rejected, more rejected than we are, that God would come and make us the cornerstone of his kingdom. There's nobody more fitting of that description than you and I. But why do you and I reject it? We're just like the minister. Yes, we are. We believe everything about God. We believe everything about the prophets. We believe everything about everybody, everywhere. But when God says that I came to make you into myself, or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, every time you're looking at the black man and parenthetically the black woman, you're looking at God. You say, I'm no God. Well, if you're not, then show me your God. Say, he don't want to be seen. Well, if he don't want to be seen, I don't want to see him. It is that misunderstanding that has us worshiping Jesus instead of following him. Because you see a man raising people from the dead. You see a man making the blind see. The deaf hear the mute to speak. You see a man taking and healing the cripple, casting out devils, turning water into wine. You know, I know you like that one. Taking two fish and five loaves and feeding the multitude. Ooh. You could easily mistake that man for being God. But he's not. What he's showing you is your own human potential. Ah, I, I never lost a debate to a Christian. I don't care how many DDs they got behind their name, PhDs behind it. It never failed. I just take them to John 14 and 12. Jesus talking in the red letters. It's in the red letters. It's in the red letters. See them red letters. It's in the red letters. Verily, verily, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than he shall he do, because I go unto the Father. What did Jesus do? He was a water walker, a gospel talker. Come on now. Huh? Raised Lazarus from the dead. Fed the multitude. Seen in the transfiguration. Moses and Elijah, and the next thing they looked up, there's only Jesus standing there. Think about this. Teaching in the temple at 12 years old. Turning water into wine is first miracle. What happened? <laughs> what about you and I? We can't even turn a dollar the, <laughs> from 15 cents, a nickel and a dime. I mean... We in bad shape. We grown men and we grown women and we begging the enemy for a job. All right, let me let me go to work. God is a man. He's always been a man. And sooner or later you'll come to grips with the fact that he is a man. And that God dwells in you. He said, I fashioned man in the Quran. I fashioned man out of black mud, sounding clay. And then I breathed my spirit, my root into him. If God breathes his spirit into you, then who are you? You're not the supreme being, but it's his spirit in you. Oh, my. So why are we mixed up? Why are we confused? Because we mixed up Jesus' teachings with what they call Christianity. <laughs> Jesus never taught Christianity. That's a name that came later. So let's look at our lessons. This is what I mean by him teaching in parables. They said, well, they, this mythology that Elijah Muhammad taught and the, these, the, these lessons, the, the five percenters is quoting and all that, and the, the, 
it, look at it. It's, it's just some, some mumbo jumbo. No, he taught in formula. And that formula has to be broken down so that you get the answer. Right? X plus two equals four. Now in algebra, you got to take that X and put it over here. And you got to do, if it was a plus, then you got to do a minus and you do that and you start doing it. And then when you break it down, when you get down, X equals two. Master Fahd Muhammad taught in formula. The messenger taught us the formula. Minister Farrakhan comes to unpack it and make it so plain that a fool's fool would understand it. So let's look at the formula. He taught his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, for three and one half years, and then he gave him an examination like all of us are gonna be examined now. Do men think they'll be left alone in saying they believe and not be tried? Oh, we're gonna be tried. We're gonna be tried individually, we're gonna be tried collectively, this world is being tried as we speak. Y'all all right? All right. I'll be finished in about three years. Come on. Lesson number one, question number five. Why did we take Jerusalem from the devil how long ago? Because one of our righteous brothers who was a prophet by the name of Jesus was buried there. He, meaning the devil, uses his name to shield his dirty religion, which is called Christianity, also to deceive the people so they will believe in him. Meaning believe in the devil, not Jesus. Jesus' teaching was not Christianity. It was freedom, justice, and equality. Jerusalem is in Palestine, Asia Minor. Jerusalem is the name given by the Jews, which means founded in peace. It was first built by the original man who was called Jesus, also Salem and Ariel. We took the city from the devils about 750 years ago. That's Salah Adin. There's that movie called The Kingdom of Heaven. That's one of my favorite movies. He came and he took, they took Jerusalem back from the crusaders so what is that all about that's good and i can give you the historical reference as to it happening in like 1187 but the truth of the matter is beloved brothers and sisters that's formula and we were told to memorize these lessons by heart and recite them right we okay well when you say this kind of stuff, this, this gets people angry. You, you saying Christianity is, 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 is a dirty religion? No. What I'm saying is, is that you cannot take Jesus's good name and shield something that's dirty. And why is it dirty? We're getting ready to go after it. Y'all ready? All right, let's go for it. What is the greatest deception? The greatest deception the Honorable Minister Farrakhan teaches us would be to deceive humanity about the one that is prophesied to come to end Satan's world and bring in a kingdom wherein all human beings can find peace, security, and justice, such as the Messiah. This story of Jesus, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, once his people know the truth of Jesus, they would wake up and be free overnight. When everybody's shouting today, when everybody got their Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, with the new suits that you went out and got, the new shoes you got from the Jew that don't believe in Jesus. But from all of us who came to church, even though we ain't been to church all year, look at me. I'm here with the tag still on my suit. I don't have enough sense to cut the tag off on the Come on, man. Come on. And they're talking about that great getting up morning. He was crucified. His blood was shed for our redemption. But on that third day, he rose with all power. Really? As Jonah was in 
side of the great fish or the whale. Three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. So said Jesus in them red letters. Three days and three nights. Twelve hours day, twelve hour nights. Now, you do the math. It was good Friday that he was crucified. He was taken down off the cross before the sun went down because of the Jewish Sabbath. They would not leave a man on the cross because of the Jewish Sabbath. So now you give me 24 hours. That would be six hours Saturday night. Saturday night fever. Another 24 hours would be Sunday night at six. But he was up on Sunday morning. That ain't three days and three nights. I don't care how you try to explain it away. It isn't three days and three nights. So we've been deceived. You can't even tell time. So don't get mad at me. Don't even look at your watch today. Because if you believe that story, I got some oceanfront property I want to sell you in Utah. Let's see what the minister says about the true teaching of Jesus. He said, the true teaching of Jesus is what you want. I know that's what you want because we are people that need Jesus. See, they gave us Jesus to control us, but we found a way to use Jesus to console us. Make sense? So we love some Jesus now. So we have to understand what it is about Jesus that will set us and make us free. Mr. Farrakhan says this, the true teaching of Jesus Christ is what the whole world needs. If Satan is going to deceive us, he has to deceive us about the most important person. And the most important person is Allah, God and Jesus, because Jesus is the one that ends the power of Satan. He absolutely overcomes death. Wow. Let's see what the minister talks about when we talk about <coughs> he comes to end the power of Satan. Minister says about the time of Satan. The time of Satan's rule is up. I'm talking about now. And, God, and the God of righteousness and justice is on the scene. And soon and very soon all the works of Satan will be destroyed. Every thought of him will be taken away. Let me stop right there. See, we'll get to all them white people. We get, Yeah, and we'll still be there. The Klan ain't killing us. The Klan's not raping us. The Klan's not robbing us. It's us killing each other. Why? Because like Frankenstein's monster, you have an abnormal mind in your head. Igor was supposed to go to the place and get a brain and he went in, in one movie, he got, a, he got the normal brain and he dropped it. And he went back and got the other one with the criminal brain and then he took it to Dr. Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein put it in there. Igor, thank you. See, Frankenstein is not the, you call the monster Frank. That, Frank, that, that's not the monster. Frankenstein is the doctor. The monster is his creation trying to make a man. But he put a criminal brain in his mind. So now we have become Frankenstein's monster. And what the creator or the maker of this Frankenstein is afraid of is just like Frankenstein turning on his master and killing his master. He's afraid that you'll turn on him with the mind he gave you, which is his mind. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me today. And humanity again will be able to live again in joy of peace because righteousness and justice will be the order of the day rather than wickedness that consumes the human family. So teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, let's go. We're going to get real scientific right now. Y'all ready? Don't go to sleep. All right. Let's go to what the Muslims believe. Point number three. We believe in the truth of the Bible, but we believe it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that mankind will not be snared by the falsehoods that have been added to it. Y'all okay? 
All right. So now, let's look at what Minister Farrakhan says about the Bible itself. That he was taught by his teacher, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, here's what the wicked scientists of religion have done. 25% of what you read of Jesus in the Bible is actually history. 75% of what you read is prophecy. So what the enemy did, he took prophecy and he made it history and took history and made it prophecy so you would be walking with Jesus and wouldn't know him. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So look, this isn't on the slide, but you you don't have to just bear with me. So in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 17th and the 18th verse, Jesus said, it's in red letters, Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Then he goes on to say, and this is very interesting, hear this. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall not in no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. Oh, this is all going to be fulfilled. It's supposed to have been fulfilled then, but it wasn't. So for the Christian, Jesus has to come back. The Jew never accepted him as Messiah. And the Quran says they tried to kill him, but they failed. Let's see if we can reconcile all that and get up here. Let me, let me go now. Let me go now to Matthew in the uh, 24th chapter, the 34th and the 35th verse. It's in red. Verily I say unto you, this generation, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I'll give you the 36th verse. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So now... All of this that I'm telling you, there's a generation that's right here among us at the time of Jesus that's not going to pass away until all of what he's talking about in Matthew is fulfilled. They're gone. We're still waiting. Why? Because he was given six days to work and a day unto the Lord is like a thousand years. So he was given 6,000 years to rule. At the end of that 6,000 years, the Messiah was to appear and introduce or be to in, introduce that thousand year millennium in which he was to rule. Jesus was 2,000 years too early, y'all. So the wicked did, did this. So let's see what the scholars of religion, let's see if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just made this up. Let's see if the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan made this up. What we like to do is say, Negro, where did you get that from? <laughs> Which usually means, where can I go read it where a white man wrote it? Let me bring these people to the witness stand. You, Sean Field, one of the greatest scholars of the 20th century, biblical scholars, New Testament scholars of the 20th century. Look what he wrote in the original New Testament. Did you know that Mark was, re Mark was really the first gospel? And that Matthew and Luke are based upon Mark? And John is written, it's, it's totally different. They call Matthew, Mark, and Luke synoptic gospels meaning you're going to find a theme through them but John is totally different like it's written by somebody different and for somebody different y'all okay yes, but look what this man you uh, uh you Schoenfeld says none of the manuscripts we have are the originals or can be demonstrated to be the exact copies of originals and there are a number of textual differences in the Greek manuscripts and in early translations like the Old Latin and Old Syriac. The authors themselves are frequently in disagreement with one another in their ideas, 
and convictions and in the matters they record. This is what he said. So let's see, there was a group of Christian scholars, see they among themselves having discussions, they don't let you and I in on it. It's not, it's not like the Illuminati or something like that. Some, some, these are people who are Christian scholars who sit down and look at things, not emotionally, because it's the Jesus of faith and it's the Jesus of history and then there's the Jesus of fulfillment. Y'all all right? <laughs> so this group called the Jesus Seminar, they wrote, they studied for years, they met together for years, and they wrote or, or recorded two books, one called the Five Gospels, the other one called the Acts of Jesus. In the Five Gospels, he said five, yeah, five. One gospel they call Q, that it is influenced the other ones. I, I'm not going to get down in the weeds on you because... Y'all look a little sleepy. <laughs> but they, they said, listen to these words, 82% of the words ascribed to Jesus in the Gospels were not actually spoken by him according to the Jesus Seminar. So now we're getting close to what God taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that 25% of what you read is history and 75% of it is prophecy. But they said, only 18% of what Jesus actually said is, is in the gospel. Then it got even deeper. The acts of Jesus, the thing that Jesus did. They said of 176 events that they studied, only 10 were given a red rating. Red indicates that the fellows had a relatively high level of confidence that the event took place. That's 16%. So if he didn't do and say those things back then, then why is it recorded? Who then would fulfill it? And when would it be fulfilled? The Messiah is to be seen in the last days. He's to close out Satan's world and he is to introduce the kingdom of God. He's called the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star shows up in the darkest point of the night before the dawn. This you, this you, Schoenfield. Look at it. He he went in and he studied the New Testament and history, and he concluded that what is written of Jesus two thousand years ago was what he called the Passover plot. We listen what he said. In this carefully documented reconstruction, Jesus contrived to be arrested before the Passover, fully aware that he would be nailed to the cross the following day, but taken down before the onset of the Sabbath in accordance with Judah's law. He will survive the agony but three, uh, but three hours on the cross. To ensure his safe removal, he arranged to be given while on the cross a drug that would make him appear dead. He would then be cut down from the cross in a death-like trance, removed by his accomplices to the tomb where he would be nursed back to health and then resurrected. Look at what they discuss among themselves and publish it in a book that you won't find in your barber shop, nail shop, or beauty shop. And your pastor and maybe at a conference, maybe discussing this kind of stuff, but they don't come back and tell you and me that. You might join the mosque. I'm just saying. When you find out that we've been telling you the truth all along, we don't want you, I don't want you to even be mad at your pastor. He don't know no better. And if he does know better, he'll be over here soon. Success does not depend on numbers. It doesn't depend on numbers. It depends on your sincerity, your faith, and your willingness to pay a price for your crown. See, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that you can't be a champion if you don't have a challenger to overcome to be a champion. That makes sense? All right. 
I'm going to bring back something that I've taught to you before about the Jews writing about the New Testament and how anti-Semitic it is. The Jewish denial of Messiahship of Jesus was simply a denial that the Messianic age here on earth had come. In other words, I don't believe 2,000 years ago was the Messianic age. The career of Jesus had not thought about what the Jews expected of the Messiah. The evil power of Rome had not been broken. No Jewish king had arisen in the independent throne. The scattered of Israel had not miraculously restored the, to the Holy Land. And the expectation of tranquility and prosperity had not come about. So they didn't believe that Jesus of 2,000 years ago is the Messiah. And even as they try to restore Jesus' Jewishness, they still don't believe that that man 2,000 years ago was the Messiah. See, the reason why the Bible is seen as anti-Semitic is because when Paul taught it and when it's translated into Greek and you see the machinations that Jesus did go through with the Sanhedrin, through the Sadducees and the Pharisees, what happened is the later writers kind of wrote his Jewishness out of it. And so this made them look like they uh, created a deicide, which is killing God, that the Jews kill Christ. And that's why they caught hell all through Europe, because that was what was taught. And even as they tried to restore his just my my uh, my my savior is a Jewish carpenter. Oh, OK. But that's still does not make him what you say he is. That's right. We okay? Yes, sir. So let's see. Let's go to the Holy Quran. It'll help us. It'll help. I'll help bring some clarity, and then uh, I'll try to finish in the next uh, two two years. When the angel said to Mary, "Oh, Mary, surely Allah gives thee good news with a word from Him, of one whose name is Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary." Worthy of regard in this world and the hereafter and of those who are drawn nigh to Allah. And he will speak to the people when in the cradle and when of old age. And he will be one of the good ones. Huh? Wait, old age? Wait a minute. Jesus was crucified, according to the Bible, in about 33 and a half years old. And according to the true history of Jesus as taught to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he was murdered at 36 years old. So what did why the Holy Quran, what you talk about, old age? Well, let's see what the next scripture says to us from the Holy Quran about the Jews. And for their saying, we have killed Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they killed him not. Nor did they cause his death on the cross, but he was made to appear to them as such. And certainly those who differ therein are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge about it, but only follow conjecture. And they killed him not for certain. Nay, Allah exalted him in his presence, and Allah is ever mighty and wise. Inshallah, one day we'll have Brother Eric to come and break this Arabic down for you, because some of these words that is translated into English is so explosive about bringing him in nearness to him and what. Now, well, what do you mean? How do you, how do you bring somebody in nearness to you if God is everywhere? Where, where did you bring him? If he escaped this death plot and you brought him somewhere, where, where are you at, God? Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so let, let's, let's spend a little time on this. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Spend just a little bit of time on this. Now look, Jesus remained on the cross for only a few hours. Go to Mark 15, 25, John 19 and 14. But death by crucifixion was always tardy. The two men crucified with Jesus were still alive when taken down from the cross. The presumption is that Jesus was too alive. The breaking of legs was resorted to in the case of two criminals, but dispensed with in the case of Jesus, John 19, 32 and 33. The side of Jesus being pierced, blood rushed out, and this was a certain sign of life. Even Pilate did not believe that Jesus actually died in so short of time, Mark 15 and 44. Jesus was not buried like the two criminals, 
but was given into charge of a wealthy disciple of his who lavished care on him and put him in a spacious tomb used near the side of a rock, Mark 15, 46. When the tomb was seen on the third day, the stone was found to have been removed from his mouth, Mark 16 and 4, which would not have been the case if there had been a supernatural rising. Mary, when she saw him, took him for a gardener, John 20 and 15, which shows that Jesus had disguised himself as a gardener. Such a disguise would not have been needed if Jesus had risen from the dead. I mean, kill me again. You know how the basketball players go. Yeah, kill me again. Look what you just did to me. Uh -huh. What do you? Why are you? Why are you disguised? Y'all okay? Yes, sir. It was the same in the same body of flesh that the disciples saw Jesus, and the wounds were still there, deep enough for a man to thrust his hand in. John twenty twenty five through twenty eight. He still felt hunger and ate as his disciples ate. Luke twenty four thirty nine and forty three. Jesus Christ undertook a journey to Galilee with two of his disciples walking side by side with him, Matthew 28 and 10, which shows that he was fleeing for refuge. A journey to Galilee was not necessary to rise to heaven. In all post-crucifixion appearances, Jesus is found hiding himself as if he feared being discovered. Jesus Christ prayed the whole night before his arrest to be saved from the cursed death on the cross, and he also asked his disciples to pray for him. The prayers of righteous man in distress and affliction are always accepted. He seemed that he even received a promise from God to be saved. And it was to this promise that he referred when he cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hebrews 5 and 7 makes the matter still more clear that there is plainly stated that the prayer of Jesus was accepted. When it says, quote, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So look, Jesus wasn't God. If he was God, why would he say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he said, myself, myself, why have you forsaken me? Y'all okay? Yes, sir. Let's move on. Mr. Farrakhan has said in the swan song, and he said that Jesus is the key. You're looking for Jesus, and he's hiding in plain sight. You don't know him. He said, I'm a little Jesus, and, and that walked among you, did miracles among you. And let's go to the Jesus is the key. He asked the question, could it be that Jesus you're looking for is hiding in plain sight? He, Elijah Muhammad, said to me one day, brother, when you find out who you are, You'll have to struggle to hold yourself down. He was gently guiding me to who I am, and none of you will be successful in teaching until you know and preach who I am. Yes. We're walking with Jesus today. Yes, sir. What Jesus went through 2,000 years ago, or what's written in the scripture that he went through, Farrakhan is going through it right now. Yes. This violence that took place, all praise due to Allah, this violence that took place in New York, in the subway, if you got a Google alert like I do, they mentioned to the, that the minister, that Minister Farrakhan, the Louis Farrakhan's teaching, Nation of Islam's teaching, black nationalist teaching, this, this uh, black, uh, black identity, what they call us, black identity extremists. And he puts what Black Lives Matter, all this, all this, all this, you find him being blamed for wokeness. Mr. Farrakhan is the alarm clock that has woke all the woke people up. And now they're pushing it back against wokeness and saying they're pushing back against the teachings that this man brought back from the dead. He didn't just raise Lazarus from the dead, he raised a nation from the dead. And we're right now showing, and if they try to kill him, they got to kill Lazarus. You didn't hear me. You was clapping, you didn't hear me. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, they said we gotta kill him now and kill Lazarus because Lazarus was the proof that he's Jesus. There's no group, no entity, no organization, no movement that ever came back from the dead once destroyed by the government of the United States but the nation of Islam. 
None, none, nobody. You can romanticize about all your black leaders you want to. None of the movements ever came back. There was a song, brother, back in the, might have been the 80s, maybe the early 90s, I don't know. He called it, he was called Rap Opera Man. He was killed in a barber shop. And he said, it's been, it's been told and it's been said, Elijah Muhammad and the teachings are dead, but we're the men that arise at dawn for Allah, Elijah and Farrakhan. That's what, it was like a rap song, right? Elijah Muhammad and the teachings were dead. And here comes Minister Farquhar, raising up a nation, being faithful to his word, not preaching about himself, but preaching about his father, our father, the honorable Elijah Muhammad and bringing back that teaching to now we started stirring. Now black is back, huh? Now we're starting to see ourselves in the proper light. That means we're woke now. And now that we're woke, they want to put us back to sleep or destroy the fruit of that wokeness. Come on, work with me now. So let's go and try to finish this. The cross. No cross, no crown. <laughs> the cross is not the symbol of Jesus. If I busted your mama in the head with a hammer, would you wear a hammer around your neck? The symbol of the early Christians was a fish. Because he told Peter, come, I'll make you fishers of men. Cross was that of Constantine. King Constantine had a vision of the cross. And the, and the interesting thing about the cross was that there was a snake climbing up on it. A snake cannot be upright. A snake has to get up on something that is standing up and it weaves its way around the thing that is standing and then can attack you from above. Constantine saw these Latin words, in hoc signo winkus, meaning with this sign we conquer. Now before the battle of the uh, Malvarian Bridge, he saw this sign. And in this sign we conquer. He was the Caesar of the Eastern Roman Empire in what was called Constantinople, now known today as Istanbul. So Moses is lifting up the ser a serpent, a human being that has the nature to lean towards that which is against the will, the way, the practice of Allah God. Allah God says in the Quran that everything submits except the rebellious devil. So you get the Ten Commandments. To them it's like the Ten Suggestions, the Ten Recommendations, the Ten Proposals. Gee whiz, I know it says, do not bear false witness against our neighbor, but you know, a little white line ain't gonna hurt. Let's go on to what this cross represents. Because you have to go to the cross. Jesus said, if any man be my disciple, he have to first deny himself, pick up his what? and follow him, not just believe in him, follow him. You want a crown? Pick up your cross. You want a crown? Deny yourself. What's your cross? I told you mine. I told you mine, what's yours? I'm not gonna ask you to expose it, but you know in your own mind what your cross is, what your habit is. What that thing that keeps you from realizing who you are and whose you are. What is it that's holding you back? Y'all okay? Yes, sir. All right. If you're on a horizontal level, you are living your life not as an upright 
human being, no, you're living your life as a low life human being with a dog like existence. A people that have taken their low desires as a God besides Allah God are lying, thieving people. You are operating on a dead level. When you operate on that level, you're not of Jesus, you're of Satan. But he has masqueraded so well. He has you thinking you are with Jesus, but you are with Satan all the time. Ooh. Well, circumstances are now brewing that's going to lead to Minister Farrakhan's arrest and crucifixion. And we can't be like Peter. When Jesus talked about that, Peter rebuked him. And just after giving Peter credit for acknowledging that he was the son of the living God, the Christ, the son of the living God, he had about four or five, no, about five verses later, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> he called his main man Satan. Why? There's some things, brother and sister, we can't stop denying. We, this is not a charismatic character cult. Minister Farrakhan has taught us principles that are eternal. Minister Farrakhan has taught us the principles as to why God brought him into the world. Even before he was pregnant in his mother's womb, he was seen by those before called into existence. He learned his purpose later in life. His teacher was telling him all along who he was. He didn't know who he was until he come to realize it. Then he began speaking it just like Jesus of 2,000 years ago, Jesus of the scripture. He never told who he was when his disciples were up there on the mountain. They saw the transfiguration. They saw Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And they said, should we set up three tabernacles? And then they looked up again and it was only Jesus. And he told them, tell no man what you've seen here. In the scriptures, he said, I am the living bread. I'm the living water. You will not thirst. You will not be hungry. And so he lost some of his disciples. We start talking about I am stuff. So when the minister now tells you, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, he said, brother, don't worry about where you are in the scriptures. He said, make my great commission known and I will represent you to the people. When I spoke in Chicago the second time, the minister got on the phone. He said, brother, I was in tears. He said, brother, you was running me down in the scriptures. He said, brother, only the Honorable Elijah Muhammad could have showed you that. I said, this just came to me, what he said to me on the phone. I blew my mind because I see him and I'm trying to get you to see him in his proper light without it being a charismatic character call. This ain't no Jim Jones drink Kool-Aid kind of thing. This is the final act of this world. And Minister Farrakhan is the principal actor in that act. He's the culmination, the finality of all of this. And brothers and sisters, you have to understand who it is that you're looking at, listening to, and watching in Minister Farrakhan. He says, when America is drawn into war, I'm too old for the draft because I'll be 90 by that time and they're going to send this executive order. They're going to come to arrest me just like they did his father, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Don't worry. Jesus kept telling the disciples these things are going to happen, but don't let your hearts be troubled. This is what is written. I have to fulfill what is written. They're not going to treat me kindly. They're not supposed to take my life because a deal was made. It's in the Bible. It's in the Quran. Remember Job? God and the devil were talking. Now, you wouldn't think that God and the devil have a talk, but hell, if Russia's President Putin and President Biden can talk, you know God and Satan converse. The conversation is written in the scriptures. Y'all okay? Yes, so now, what is Mr. Farrakhan facing? He said, I'm facing crucifixion. He said, because if I say I'm a little Jesus and the big one is on the Savior, which with the Savior on the wheel, you can't get to him. I'm his representative so you can get to me. So my Omega Psi Phi brothers, I have a lot of Omega brothers. They gave me a purple robe of the founder of Omega Psi Phi. 
They draped me with the robe. The Jewish rabbi came to my hotel room in New York. Harry Belafonte was sitting there with me and the rabbi brought me a gift, a gift of a chalice on a silver plate calling me the Messiah. When I first read it, I said, oh man, this is off. This isn't for me, this is for my teacher. I was so far away from seeing myself, but the messenger said, when you find out who you are, you're going to have to struggle to hold yourself down. I know now who I am, and I know that I'm about to be taken. I know that. So now, yesterday we had, and I'm so proud, like the minister's proud of the young people that were on that line reciting the Holy Quran. All praises due to Allah. I'm proud of the young people that are in this mosque. All praises due to Allah. Yesterday we had uh, a screening of Minds Forgotten documentary and a panel discussion. They tell me it was like Hercules Unchained, Django Unchained and all of that. Yes, sir. But the state of mind of the disciples and, it, and, this, and, and this documentary was made by two of our sisters in the mosque. Y'all okay? Yes, sister Kudia and Sister um, Kudisa and, and Sister uh, Sadia, two youngsters rocking the world. But the state of mind of the disciples, what would make Judas betray Jesus? What would make Peter deny Jesus? What would make the, the, the disciples abandon Jesus? And what made them sisters, the Marys, stay and John stay with Jesus? Betrayal was anger. Disappointment. Minister Farrakhan said disappointment always precedes treachery. Y'all all right? So be careful when you're disappointed, brother and sister. Be careful when you're dissatisfied, because that's when we find out who you really are. And I really am when you're disappointed. As long as things are going cool, I let you down. I knew you looking. I was supposed to lend you that hundred dollars, man. I ain't come through. I ain't even returned your texts or your calls. You disappointed now. All of a sudden, man, I done gone from the cast me out to the dogs bow wow. It's a daggone shame. Denial. Denial. What is it that led to Jesus' crucifixion? It was envy. It was fear. What caused the disciples to abandon him? It was fear. But what made them sisters and John stay with him through what the Catholic Church called the Stations of the Cross? Stay with him during the crucifixion and be the first one to go check on the tomb where he was laid when she met the angel. Where have you laid, my Lord? Where'd you, where, where's he at? Who? It was love. When you and I love like that, and all those other things go away. When you love, you don't envy. When you love, it casts out fear. When you love, you can control your anger. Your patience. You're long suffering when you love and you're steadfast. You're loyal when you love. All right. Now, let me talk to the young people and then we can go home. So look here. Let me tell you something about this man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan. Pay attention, young folk. Those of you under Anyway, uh, <laughs> my sons, I tell you, Robert's in the audience. My son, my son Robert, I tell you, there was four rules I taught them. I said, brothers, four things you don't do with a woman, brother, you, you'll be the winner. One, you never mention a woman's age. Don't ask about her age. Two, don't talk about her weight. Three, never call a woman by another woman's name. 
And four, never compare one woman to another woman. I said, sons, if you do that, you're going to be all right. So you notice when I said, those of you under, and I looked at you and I, <laughs> I ain't going to, Azima, it's going to be all right. Yes. I'm, talking, I'm talking to these young people. Y'all, y'all, we all young people, right? In an article written by David Wells that appeared actually in the Washington Post originally, in February of 1991, 1991, they are now looking at hip hop music. Now I want you to think about where hip hop is now and what based upon just this little quote that this man said about it. He said, Elijah Muhammad, the longtime leader of the nation of Islam is having a deep influence on rap music 15 years after his death. With unprecedented directness, a number of new rappers are quoting Muhammad's core dogma that white people are a race of devils and snakes and that African Americans are descended from the tribe of Shabazz, the original man created by Allah. Now, what is it that this man recognized that we don't understand why rap music's trajectory changed? I'm not angry at NWA for saying F the police. I understand that kind of anger based upon what was taking place. When you think about what happened to Rodney King and all of that, some of y'all ain't old enough to remember that, but I do. Yes, you understand the crash teams that were going after the gangs and you understand that, that kind of anger. But what is it that took a whole industry from kind of party music and this kind of consciousness music with Big Daddy Kane Huh? X Clan, right? Chuck D and uh, Public Enemy. What is it that took it to where it is right now that you're talking about, sir? Running women, stacking paper, and it's all about image now, showing up with all this cash and all this kind of stuff and cars and all that. What happened? From wearing African medallions and whatnot and kufis. What happened? You used to be Queen Latifah. Used to be brand new being. What happened? Look at it where it is right now. So understand, young folk, is your baton now. And understand what they're doing is they're setting you up for death for this next thing here. Mr. Farrakhan I've been warning us. It's justifiable homicide. When they kill one of us, he had a gun. He touched my he touched my taser. He was struggling with me. I wrestle you down, get you down on the ground and blow your brains out. And guess what? I run up in your house. You sleeping and I, I got a, a permit to carry. But you rolled up in my house, kicking the door. I'm dead sleep. Who you think I'm going to come? I'm going to come up. You kill me and then you. Nothing. Nothing. It's setting us up for mass murder. We have to stop the killing. We have to do something. We can't just talk about it. We got to demonstrate that we understand and we have to connect with them. That, that demographic that is most likely to either be involved in crime and is filling up Harris County Jail, 8,000 of them, or being a victim of it. Every black mother and father has that talk with their sons in particular. If you're pulled over, make sure you turn on that light. Put both hands on the wheel. Roll down all your windows, especially if you got a, a, a tin on your windows, roll down all your windows. Keep your hands on wheel. We have to all have that talk. Why? Why? Becky and, and Jimmy don't have to have that talk. But we have to have it with our sons if we want them to come home. Every time a mother's son steps out the house, oh my, oh Allah, please bring my baby back. Mr. Farrakhan talking to the youth this morning on the youth prayer line. 
He said, you become a traitor to the memory of your ancestors when you allow the enemy to fill you with drugs and take away from you the power of your own mind and soul by lacing drugs with poison because they don't want us to have a future. Fentanyl is starting to be dropped in all of these doors and it's killing us, man. I want you to know you are cooperating with Satan when you light up a joint. You're cooperating with the destroyers of our people to destroy our nation again. This is why the black community is filled with guns, guns in your ignorance to kill one another and drugs to make you feel good. But here's the solution, brothers and sisters. Here's what he said to them toward the end of his talk. He said, if you read your Holy Quran, say your prayers and rise up like a people should, you'll be high. But not high in a stupid way, but high as I am this morning. High off the love of God, Allah. High off the love of the prophet, peace be upon him. High off of the love of my teacher, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And high off of him who came alone from Mecca to give us life again after our death. There's a way to escape the last plague of death and let the angel of death pass over. It's the blood of the lamb. It's the way of the lamb. It's the life of the lamb that he showed us. It's the willingness to pay the price, the sacrifice on the cross. You're on my horizontal ways for a vertical way and be like Abraham, the upright one. And crucify that evil on that cross so that we may be resurrected human beings and purified. So that Satan will not have our mind, but we will be able to overcome the wiles of Satan. And so, brothers and sisters, know that this enemy intends to try to wipe us out 1,000%. So, I tell you, as Mr. Farrakhan told us, don't let them vaccinate you. Yes. And I'll close as I have in the last, I don't know, four or five weeks. I'm going to keep hitting this quote and this scripture as I close. I know the demonstration of love from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I've tried to do the same in my work, Mr. Farrakhan says. So can you look beyond the faults and see the needs of your people? And are you going to be one who is always condemning our people, calling them N-words? The word should be stricken from our vocabulary because Master Father Muhammad never called us that. He said that we are the original people, the first in the light of the sun. We are the people of God, if you believe that then treat our people like you believe that. They are more than what they show because what they show is a manifestation of their ignorance. If you treat them with an evil attitude, you only demonstrate that you have never been raised from a dead level. Do you love our people? Do you love our people? Yes, sir. Do you love our people? Yes, sir. What are you willing to do to prove that love? Remember, no cross, no crown. Yes, sir. God is love, and the love that God is, is the love that God did and showed. James, the second chapter, 17th through 18th verse says, even so faith, if it faith not works, is dead. No, excuse me. Faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's time now that we show and prove. Because right now, if you've been looking at the last, I mean, five editions of the Final Call newspaper, all of them have been trying to warn us. They will seek peace, but they, they there shall be none. Beginning of sorrows and all of that, what has it been in these last final calls? Brothers and sisters, we're at the end of this thing. It's not going to get better. It's not going to go away. Didn't that always be, always be, uh, all of a sudden be some peace and now all of a sudden everything's going to go back to, it's no more normal. It's a new normal now. This country is unraveling. They're divided. And they're fighting one another. And guess what? Whenever elephants fight, the grass gets trampled. I'll put it this way. This may help you put it in perspective. Only a fool fights in a burning house. This house is on fire. 
And if we fight with one another, we're going to be taken up in the fire that is consuming America right now with our hatred of one another. She divided partisanship, as Minister Farrakhan said, that this partisanship is the death of this country. It is hopelessly split Ge geographically, regionally, party wise, class wise, color wise. It is hopelessly split, and you can dream all you want to. The reality is that we need to do something for ourselves. The reality is, is that we now need to rule ourselves. But before we can rule ourselves, we have to go through something, a purification process. We have to pass through a portal of death. Doesn't mean we're dying all of a sudden we jump up again, but we have to die in the old you and become the new you and me. Is that right? So come on and get your ex and be an ex Negro. An ex fool, an ex drug user, an ex gang banger, an ex all of that. Take off the old man, put on the new, and let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus and in the Jesus as among us today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I thank you for listening. May Allah bless you. Pick up your cross and follow him so we can get that crown. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
If you can come, Ali of Muhammad, praise it be to Allah. <laughs> praise it be to Allah. She just registered yesterday. Praise it be to Allah. So she just got registered yesterday. So praise be to Allah and her, her dad and her mom. So praise be to Allah. Let's give them also a round of applause as well. We're striving to be good Muslims. Because, because once you turn 16, praise be to Allah, once you turn 16, you have to make that decision. And then once you make that decision, then go through the process. And that's the beauty of it. So she accepted her own, and now her name is in the Lamb Book of Life. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, niece. Also, the name that our beloved student regional minister mentioned, he mentioned the song that the brother wrote, but he didn't mention brother's name. His name was Brother Herman Muhammad out of Atlanta who was shot. He was a barber, and he gave his life uh, protecting a sister uh, on that particular day. So that's a name we definitely want to always remember, our beloved brother Herman Muhammad. Let's give him a round of applause. Praise be to Allah. That soldier who gave his life. Praise, praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. You know, brothers and sisters, also, we have... Next slide, please. Thank you. Now, always remember, we're still in a pandemic. Now they're talking about BA2, plus be coming back, BXYR, whatever it is, right? Right, so, so but let's, let's remain vigilant and protecting ourselves. So you can log on to www.noi.org slash vaccine or noi.org slash c19. Definitely get the two books, How to Eat to Live. All right, next slide, please. Praise be to Allah. So you have the final call uh, radio, final call digital, final call .com. You can log on, you can purchase that. But also, brothers and sisters, we have the hard copies of this mighty final call newspaper. If you heard, for those who are registered on Wednesday night, the final calls that are being sold throughout the country, that the brothers are out on the corner and going door to door delivering the word of God because we're not paper boys. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that again. Because it's like, no, we are not paper boys. So one of my clients, I dropped the paper off to him. I said, man, I'm about to get on the corner. He said, you going out there? You going out there like it was something that was de demeaning to myself. I said, I'm on my way out there. Yes, sir. You know, so it's, it's important that we carry our word in the shoulders that we carry the star, sun, moon and star upon our shoulders. As you see, a government uh, of a new world. And this is the propaganda. I know they always put in proper, the term propaganda in a negative sense, but it's not a negative word. But this is our news that we deliver unto our people to open up their eyes. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar reads the paper every week. So when you see what's on the front cover, know where the minister mind is, know where God mind is, all right? So praises be to Allah. And then every day, let's, let's tune in to finalcallradio.com. Next slide, please. Yes, and store.finalcall.com, as we already talked about how to eat to live, you can get the secret relationships between uh, blacks and Jews, uh, teachings 2.0, closing the gap. Of course, all the books by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at store.finalcall.com. And the turnaround time is awesome, right? You put in an order today. I ain't gonna say you're gonna get it tomorrow, but you will get it by next week in, within the middle of next week. So praise be to Allah. Next slide, please. Yeah, so today, and thank you all for tuning in to 99 and 30. 99 and 30, the 99 attributes of Allah in 30 days. Uh, here's the Zoom information, brothers and sisters. So if you have your phones or a pen, let's take it out and let's, let's write down the Zoom information. Uh, the meeting ID is 848-1885-8414. Ramadan 45 is the password. And today we have our beloved young brother, student, um, FOI coordinator out of uh, Waxahachie, brother Malik, uh, Malik um, Muhammad Jr. Uh, will be on today. So tune in at 5 uh, p.m. And thank you all for tuning in. We, inshallah, we may have a special guest uh, at the end of Ramadan, inshallah. Now, anytime, any place, how many of you have not 
when it's subscribed to Let's Get It Clean. Oh, well, praise be to Allah. Everybody subscribe. Okay, good. But spread the word. Spread the word. And let's subscribe to Let's uh, Get It Clean. All right. Next, next slide, please. Now, that mighty, 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 mighty. You can purchase your local uh, bean pies on the outside. Also, you can order your online, the supremebeanpie.com. And that comes to you fresh. I had me one. I got mine yesterday. Ooh. Oh, man. I mean, you talking about it was so good. You know, I didn't even have to put it in the oven to let it just, you know, I ain't going to say marinate, but just, yeah, just get warm, right? It just came warm, right? Like it just, just came right out the oven. Oh, it was so good. Praise be to Allah. So next slide, please. Now, Sunday dinner. Today, after the mosque meeting. The money that you have left over from your charity, that you came already ready to purchase your dinner. Let's get it today, uh, brothers and sisters. So praise and low price of $18. It's, it's, um, it's maple flame baked chicken, salmon, or cauliflower steak. Can y'all just, the Muslims are just phenomenal. Uh, yes. Right? I know you never went nowhere else and heard of cauliflower steak. And it's not beef, it's cauliflower. <laughs> so get your order today, brothers and sisters. So praise be to Allah. Next slide, please. All right. So now during the month of Ramadan, we know that our meetings are at 6.30 on, um, um, throughout the week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and also at 10 a.m. on Sundays. So if you have purchased your book or have not, we have four of these left. The uh, all um, Al Quran Arabic findings course will start our class, inshallah, uh, God willing, on next Sunday at 12 30. So get your book today. We have four left in class. For those who already purchased your book, we'll begin class on next Sunday at 12 30. Okay. And then our next class, after we get our Arabic down, start reading our Quran from the right side. Then we're going to go into our 13 short surahs of memorization. So make sure you get your book uh, as well and start memorizing your, um, your, your Quran. First start in English. So when you get the Arabic down, you'll know what you're saying. And then from there, you can begin to build your vocabulary. All right. And then as Muslims, we pray. So make sure you get your Muslim daily prayers um, book. All right, that the Honorable Minister Lord Farquhar wrote the forward to. Didn't we enjoy the Honorable Minister Lord Farquhar this morning? Uh, wasn't he so beautiful? Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. So last point on this coming up Thursday, uh, yours truly will be doing the Ramadan prayer line. So that's at 5 a.m. Eastern, 4 a.m. Central. So praise be to Allah. So at this time, let us stand for prayer. Y'all must knew I was coming up to pray. <laughs> Prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve. Thee alone do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path you bestowed your favors upon, and not the path you brought your wrath down upon, nor those who've gone astray. We humbly submit this prayer in the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, thanking you for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we as a believing community say, Amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Always remember, never be the aggressor in word or deed. And if anyone fight with you, fight with them in the name of Allah, and may he grant you victory. Assalamu alaikum. That's the deed.